Hey guys, War Machine 395 here with a video review of an older kit now for something that I've assembled quite a while ago. Alright, I guess I phrased that fairly badly. Uh, so, I'll be doing a review on the high grade Universal Sentry Stark Jagan, which I bought all the way back in 2010 when it first came out, I think. I never really reviewed it. So, I'm going to try and do that today. Um, Alright, so, I basically disarmed him and taken off his hands. Uh, by the way, he only comes with the two hands. The trigger finger hand and the open palm. So he's kind of a bit of an oddball in that regard. He always has to have a weapon, apparently. Um, Alright, so, before I get going, he also is based off the standard dragon kit, but he does not come with all the parts you need to make the standard dragon. So just kind of be aware of that if you guys are interested in buying this guy and think you can get the standard dragon out of him. You can't. Alright, so. Uh, we're going to start with the head. Alright, so it's mounted on a standard ball joint. Though it's a plastic joint, so it's very, very stiff by comparison with your usual joints. Alright, and it's worth noting that it's on a bit of a hinge, so it can bob back and forth fairly easily. Uh pop. Alright, and it can only rotate about back to the backpack before it gets stuck. Alright, the usual chicken movement as well. Alright, and uh, that's about it. Alright, so the shoulders are mounted on a peg and that can actually move in and out on the chest. Alright, uh, I'm going to show you this up close, the shoulder mechanism. So we'll look at it this way too. It's uh, it's actually pretty good looking, really, for a shoulder, um, and it's very, very stiff. All right, so it's probably one of the more ruggedized shoulder units in the high grade Universal Century set of kits. And that's saying something, really. Uh, all right, so arms can go up that high before they hit the boosters on the shoulder, and they can go down again. All right. They rotate below the shoulder, all right, full 360, no trouble. Uh, elbows get a little better than 90 before the armor hits other armor, all right. Uh, hands are mounted on ball joints, as per usual, all right. Um, and the waist is mounted on a ball joint in there, big plastic ball joint, so you don't have to worry about it getting loose, all right. And you have something in the chest there, so that sits all the way down there. You can raise it a little bit to get more movement if you need to. Alright, so you can get all over the place. And then you can push down so it doesn't move that far. If you uh, lift these a little bit, this is the max you can get before you hit the side back skirt, sorry. Right here. Alright, so limited rotation at the waist, which isn't bad. So that just means it's kind of almost humid, right? Now the front skirts are built in such a way that you can separate them. They have that uh, double ball joint thing going on right behind here. All right, so you can cut them apart if you'd like. I don't have them cut apart on my kit because when I built it, I managed to break them. All right, so this is quite a while when I first built the kit, but so I just got to be careful. You can see where I glued it. All right, so it sheared off right in there. Not so great, right? So, he can almost get his foot right up over his head. It's pretty good. See if he stands him up like this. Yeah. It's pretty good there. Just try and keep him out of the way of the front skirts. And as far back as the back skirt, because that does not move. Okay. And then, knee articulation, because of the gray add-on parts, it's only a little bit better than 90. Uh, I don't think it would get much better without. Alright, so I'll put this back together for a second. Alright. Um, then, the feet are a little limited too because of the gray parts on there. That far forward, that far back, and if you're interested, side to side, about that much. Okay, and I think I missed the side skirts. Those are on a peg, okay? So they can flop up and down. 
So, and also rotate a little bit side to side. It also kind of look like an ammo clip. It's a good idea. Very clever design cue. Alright, so from there, I think it's time we uh, go to the backpack. Alright, so these fins, or fuel tanks, or something like that, stabilizer fins, something. Alright, those are all movable. They have hinges, so these can go up here to a max. Not sure why you want them up there. That looks odd. Alright, and then down here, where they hit the back skirts to a max. And the top one can go up and down about 10, 15 degrees, I'd say. So that's pretty good. Alright, so, where this kiss really shines is its aesthetics, though. Um, clearly isn't really showing them off right now, but part of that is the armament. So, first accessory you get, you don't really see this one in the anime, is a, or the OVA, sorry, is the beam rifle. Alright, I believe that is the standard one that comes with the jagging kit, though I am not entirely sure. Alright, so, of course he never uses that in the OVA, so there's no point in posing him with that, right? So, throw that over here. Alright, so, then, you have the missile pods. Alright, so those have two holes in the bottom, and they mount on the shoulders. And you have two of them, so, do the math. And you put them in the closest hole, just like that. Um, my only complaint, though, is if you look like this, you can see the hole. That's kind of an annoyance to me. If I ever get around to painting that kit, I'm going to try and fix it. And it doesn't help when I put the missile pods on backwards. Alright. Yes, the whole hole is still there. <laughs> yes. Alright, so... Next accessory is uh, the beam saber. You don't actually have a place to hold the handle anywhere on the kit. And you get the open hand to hold it. Alright. That's your right hand. Pop. That's good to go. Alright. And the other accessory, besides the beam rifle, which I have the trigger finger hand mounted on. You only get the two hands. I believe I said that earlier. That's kind of unfortunate, but I still love it so much. Alright, so, let's pop in here like that, and we're good. Alright, so this is, at this point, it's nice to have this guy posed aerial. So you can kind of see them, yeah, it just looks awesome like that. I really do need to get around to painting it at some point, but enough talk. I think it's time for a size comparison with some other fellows from the high-grade universal century. Uh, first up, we'll stand him next to the Gem 3, which I have painted and reviewed. So, you guys got an idea of what he stands in height. Alright, so, not too shabby. Um, next, uh, we'll stand him up next to the Jagan Ekwas type, which should be the same height though a little less bulked up, because it doesn't have the uh, Stark parts, I guess. Yeah. Some part of me wants to kit bash the two, but I feel like that's not a good idea. Anyway, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll be back with another review.